Disclaimer. This YouTube channel does not claim ownership to any reference materials compiled, used and uploaded. The lecture notes and questionnaires researched from various resources and test bank foundations are not in any way or any form influenced by PRC. The intent of the video is to support future licensed professionals who choose to review online, in their journey towards their respective board examinations. For today's spec call and general education science, specifically for no, chemistry and physics. So let's start. Ready? Okay. Number one. <clears throat> Why do we hear thunder some seconds after seeing a lightning? A. Light appears brighter in the sky. B. Light travels faster than sound. C. Sound travels 1,331 meters per second. Or D. Sounds <coughs> is released later on. Write the letter of the correct answer in your paper or answer sheet. And then later on, uh, same, you will report your score every uh, 10 items. So this is a question in physics. Okay, so the correct answer is letter B. <clears throat> because light travels faster than sound okay actually sabay yan kaya lang nauna lang na na nagta-travel yung light kaya nauna nating nakikita yung yung kidlat kaysa naririnig yung thunder okay kaya may kaya pag may kidlat na expect na merong thunder but sometimes Hindi na natin naririnig yung iba kasi sa iba sa uh, ano na, sa, sa sa dami ng mga barriers or mediums or distractions sa dadaanan ng sound waves. Okay? Kaya minsan kat <coughs> natanong nila, sir, nagkakakidlat naman pero walang kulog. Yes. Pero hindi lang natin narinig, baka narinig nila sa other part. I mean, other corner of the place, other corner of the area. Or the geographical location. So, the travel lang yung light faster than <coughs> thunder or than sound rather. So, ganito siya. So, once na nag strike yung light ni, after a few seconds, like seven or five to seven seconds, sa kamuna rinig yung sound. Kasi, usually, Light travels at a constant speed of 186,000 miles. Okay. Did you get the correct answer? <clears throat> okay. So I repeat, light waves travel much faster than sound because uh, light waves uh, do not need a medium. Yung dad, ano, uh, yeah, the medium in which to travel. Pero yung sound kasi, kailangan na yung sound waves rather. Yung waves ang nag, 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 nagta-travel. Okay? Pero yung ano naman, <clears throat> uh, slower naman siya sa other materials such as water, glass, and so on. Okay? Let's proceed. Number two. A student walks from home to school three blocks away and then returns home during lunch time. But after lunch, he goes back to school. What is the displacement of the student? A. Zero block. B. Three blocks. Six blocks. Nine blocks. Displacement. Ang hindi natanong. Correct answer is <clears throat> letter B, three blocks. 
bakit three blocks? Kasi displacement as as an unknown quantity or as a quantity in the problem is a vector quantity. So ito yung two types of quantities kasi like for example <coughs> scalar and vector quantities. Yung speed, for example, mass, time and volume are all scalar quantities. But velocity, weight, friction, and displacement. Yung displacement, yun yung counterpart ng distance. Kung distance sana ang tinanong sa problem, kasi ang, ang scalar kasi wala siyang magnitude. I mean, wala siyang direction rather. Vector has both magnitude and direction. <coughs> now, going back to the problem. Pumunta siya sa school, 3 blocks. Bumalik siya. So, 3 blocks din yon, So, 0. Na-cancel siya. Kasi kinoconsider natin ang, ang direction when we speak of displacement. Okay? Then, after lunch, bumalik siya sa school. So, 3 blocks ulit. Kaya ang answer ay 3 blocks. Na-cancel yun. But, kung ang tinanong kasi ay distance traveled, magiging 9 blocks. Kasi, 3 nung papunta, 3 nung pa -uwi, 3 ulit nung papunta. Kasi, distance, hindi kinoconsider ang, hindi tinadagdag ang direction. Okay? Because distance is a scalar quantity. Pero, displacement is. Okay? Displacement is a distance na merong direction. Did you get? So, three blocks. Yan ang sagot doon. Na-cancel yung first kasi three blocks in going home. I mean, going to school, three blocks in going home. So, bumalik siya sa zero. Then, after lunch, start ulit siya ng three blocks. So, I repeat, displacement is a vector. So, the direction is always considered. So, Yun, when the student returns home, the three blocks displacement is cancelled. And uh, going back to school will give again another three blocks. Kaya yun. <coughs> okay. Did you get? So, this is a concept of vectors. <coughs> Pag speed naman, yung kabilis. So, <coughs> Ang speed mo, alimbawa, ng car mo ay at 80 meters per second. If it is 80 meters per second, that's the speed. Pero when it, it is velocity, like 80 meters per second to the east, to the north, to the right, to the left, basta may direction siya, magiging velocity yung speed. Okay? Magiging velocity na siya. Next, number three. <clears throat> in the race between the man and the dog, the man appeared to move faster than the dog and finish the race ahead. So, di ba pag race yan, ibig sabihin, sabay silang tatakbo o magtalakad. How will you describe the motion of the two during the race? Bakit nauna yung man? Okay? A. The man traveled a longer distance than the dog. B. The dog used a longer time to finish the race. C. The man used a shorter time to finish the race. And then D. The man and the dog traveled the same distance at the same time. Correct answer is <coughs> C. The man used a shorter time to finish the race. Okay? Bakit shorter time? Kasi the speed of a body, kasi pabilisan yan eh, race, di ba? Race siya. So the speed of, of a particular object of a body depends on two factors. We have the distance and the time. Ito yung relationship. 
okay distance and time so <clears throat> the longer the distance traveled in a shorter time interval will result in a greater speed so since that is a race the grace sila ibig sabihin pareho sila ng distance data travel kumbaga let's say nag contest sila sa 5 uh, 100 meter dash for example so that's the distance so ang paglalabanan na lang nila is the the time to get a a shorter speed kung sino sa kanila ang nauna since nauna si man anong meron so the man used a shorter time and so he traveled faster and finished the race ahead okay how because the speed is calculated by means of distance over time the distance you travel divided by the time elapsed okay yun distance divided by time kung distance naman ang pag-uusapan i-multiply mo lang din so ito yung pyramid yung pyramid na <clears throat> para makuha mo yung mga derivation of formulas. Distance, ang kinahanap, multiply mo lang. Speed times time. Okay? But if you're looking for time, yun naman ang di-divide mo. Distance divided by the speed of the body. So, that is the concept of motion. Okay? Speed, distance, and time. So, in the problem, the answer is Siyempre, si man used a shorter time to finish the race. Kasi race yan. So, pinag-usapan dyan ay distance and the time. So, speed. Kasi paunahan eh. Race. Okay? So, the man used a shorter time to finish the race. Okay? Next, number four. Which of the following is true when a block of wood lays at rest on top of the table? So, ibig sabihin, nandun lang siya, naka-rest. There are no forces acting on the block. The sum of the forces acting on the block is zero. The block is in uniform motion. The block is accelerated. So, looking at the question, syempre, at rest na nga siya eh. So, ibig sabihin, wala siyang motion. Wala siyang movement. So, scrap muna si C. Tapos, si D, accelerated. Ang acceleration, yun yung bilis over time. So, since hindi naman siya nag naggagalaw, so it is at rest. So, erase mo na rin si D. So, pagpipilian mo dyan is A and B. Kasi ang sabi dyan is at rest. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Answer. We have so all bodies at rest is for having the sum of the forces acting on that body is zero. Zero siya. Yung letter A kasi there are no forces acting on the block. Meron. Kahit naka-steady lang siya, meron siyang force. Let's see. Ano kaya yung force na yun? Now, this is for example, because for a body at rest, the sum of all the forces acting on this block should be zero. Kasi nakakancel. So what are the forces acting on it? Meron yung normal force. The normal force, yun yung kinikerry ni block. Tapos, yung block, syempre, meron siyang bigat. And that is the weight. Kung mass siya, hindi siya force. Okay? Pero since yung block ay naka-steady, nandito siya sa, nakagumagamit siya ng acceleration due to gravity na 9.8 meters per second square. So, magiging weight siya. Kaya, weight is a force. So, we have the normal force and the weight cancelled together. Kaya, zero. Okay? So, there is no resultant force acting on the block so, this block stays at rest on top of the table. Okay? So, <clears throat> I would like to emphasize this. Weight. Ano pang pagkakaiba ng weight and mass? Diba? Lagi natin inano yan. Uh, mass, bigat ng object. Yung weight, bigat din ng object. Now, if I will to ask you, uh, 
if or if I were to ask you what is your weight, gaano ka kabigat? Anong sasabihin mo? Dapat ang correct way of answering that, especially uh, scientifically or scientific way, should be I weigh uh, 719 newtons. Ganun dapat. Pag tinanong nila ang weight mo, mong sasabihin, ah, I weigh 30 kilograms, 70 pounds, or 110 pounds. No, that is only the mass. Mass ang tawag doon, yung bigat mo lang. Pero, if you multiply that mass to 9.8 meters per second square, that becomes a weight. Kaya ang formula ng weight ay your mass times acceleration due to gravity or G. Kaya kung ang bigat mo ay 70 kilograms, i-multiply mo yan ng 9.8 meters per second. Okay? O try mo i-multiply. For example, ako, for example, 70 times 9.8. So, <clears throat> ang correct na weight ko ay 600, ano ba yan? 696 686 newton. Yun dapat ang sasabihin ko. Okay? 600 newton. Okay? Nakuha nyo? So, I repeat. Halimbawa, ang, ang bigat ko ay 70 kilograms. This is not the weight. This is your mass. Okay? So, in order for it to become a weight, kailangan mong I-multiply ng 9.8 meters per second. Ito yung gravity <coughs> per second square. Ito yung gravity kung bakit tayo nakastay sa Earth. Kasi if you will not multiply that, wala, you will be flying. Okay? So, therefore, my weight is 686 newtons. Kasi kilogram meter per second square is the same as Newton. Okay? So, 686 Newton. Halimbawa, ang bigat mo dito sa Earth ay 70 kilograms. Pumunta ka sa Moon. Or let's say, pumunta ka lang sa 124th floor ng Borge Khalifa. Same pa din ang mass mo, 70 kilograms. Kaya lang, pag weight ang pinag-uusapan, medyo bababa. Ba. Kasi you will... suffer weightlessness. Di ba pag pupunta ka ng 124th floor, medyo feeling mo ang gaan-gaan mo lang. Okay? Bakit feeling mo ang gaan? Kasi lumalayo ka sa gravity. Yung pull of gravity. Kaya nga tayo nakakapaglakad eh. Lakad, lakad. Kasi hinihila ni, ni Earth yung isang paa mo, yung isa maangat. Kaya lakad, angat pa. Di ba? Hindi ka naman lumalakad na parehong uh, aapak, parehong aangat, di ba? So, that's the concept of weight in relation to the acceleration due to gravity. So, kung 70 kilos ka, pupunta ka ng moon. Pag nasa moon ka, 70 kilos pa din. Kaya lang, syempre, iba yung acceleration due to gravity. Walang gravity sa moon, kaya nagpo-float sila. Okay? I hope clear siya. Okay? Next, number five. <coughs> ah, okay. Assuming na may gumalaw sa block, halimbawa, yan at rest siya. Let's say may, may nagtulak sa block na pa ganyan. We call this force as applied force. Okay? Na-apply mo siya. So, pag pinulak mo yung block, meron ding force na tutulak sa force na yan. Yun yung tinatawag nating frictional force. mag mag uh, tawag doon uh, magkakaroon ng interaction kasi yung table dito at saka yung black di ba rubbing rubbing of any two surfaces causes friction kaya frictional force naman yan kaya mababalance din siya okay so yan yung mga forces na na-apply sa block kung naka-address siya or may gumalaw. Okay, number five. <coughs> What property of matter is involved in the sign fasten your seatbelt? 
fasten your seatbelt. A. Infinite Tranquility B. Inertia C. Acceleration D. Interaction Okay, correct answer is <clears throat> B. Inertia Okay so here, this is in relation to the Newton's law of motion. Ito, inertia, acceleration, and interaction, yan yung three laws of motion ni uh, Newton. Newton's law. Di ba minsan pag nakasakay kayo ng, uh, let's say, papasakay ka ng metro. So galing ka sa labas, yung metro naka-stop, then pumasok ka biglang umabante. Ano yung unang movement mo? Pa forward or backward? This is also the law of inertia. Same is true with nag-stop yung metro. So, alimbawa, nakatayo ka. Gu uh, na uh, oh, gumagana siya, ongoing. Tapos, biglang nag-stop yung metro. Di ba, meron tayong reaction sa katawan. Is it mauna ba ang forward or backward? Ano yung idea nyo doon? Okay? So, this is the law of inertia, the ability the ability of our body to remain at rest. When at rest, pag walang gumagalaw. Pero, it will continue to move in uniform motion unless acted upon by a net force. Halimbawa, ni-roll mo yung bola. Pag walang force na magdi-distract sa bola, it will move forever. Magmo-move yun. Bakit siya nag stop Kasi maraming uh, other resistance like air resistance kaya nag stop siya. Diba? Pero kung walang resistance, tatakbo yun. I mean, ro-roll yun na continuous. Yung second law is the law of acceleration. Ito naman ay uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Ito yung mga concept ng uh, collision. <coughs> okay? Halimbawa, nag-collide yung truck at kotse. So, definitely, titilapon yung kotse kasi mas malaki yung truck. Kasi kinoconsider dito yung mass. Okay? Tapos yung third law naman, for every action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. So, uh, let's say, nakaupo ka ngayon. Meron kang third law of motion. Ano yun? So, by means, uh, by merely sitting down or sitting, nagkakaroon ka ng friction. Nagiinit yung pa, uh, tawag doon, yung chair and your wet. So, yun yung, in, yung reaction. Action-reaction. Ano ba? Pag sinampal ka, mag-aaray ka. Yun yung reaction. Okay? So, yung question natin kanina, when uh, there is a sudden stop in the metro, let's say you are riding, your body moves forward muna bago mag-backward. Kaya sa, sa yung question na yan, kailangan ng fasten yung seatbelt. Yun yung purpose noon. Para pag na accident ka, hindi ka uh, titilapon sa harap. Para merong mag, uh, tawag doon, mag, uh, kikip sa'yo on your place. Yan yung purpose ng seatbelt. Okay? So, ano naman, pag uh, naka-stop naman yung car at puma umupo ka and then biglang nag-move, magpa-backward ka muna bago mag-forward. Oh, di ba? Na hindi nyo ba na na-observe yung mga yon? Hindi nyo man lang tinatanong bakit kaya po forward muna bago backward or backward bago mag-forward? Sa bagay naman, bakit pala yung pinapakialaman yung mga ganong movement? Di ba? But just to explain kung bakit ganon yung movement, yan ang ini-explain sa <clears throat> loss of motion. Okay? So the correct answer, that, and that is letter B, 
Earth's Law of Inertia. Ito din yung mga experiments na yung uh, yung dalawang bottle na pinag tapos kailangan mong hugutin yung yung pera sa gitna na hindi gagalaw. That's the law of inertia. Yun din yung tatanggalin mo yung yung table cloth sa table na may mga place glass sa ibabaw. So, bakit nila natatanggal yun? Kasi, kailangan mo siyang ibilisan para ma-maintain nung table yung inertia, yung address siya. Okay? That's, those are application of the, the loss of motion. Okay? Clear? Next, number six. <clears throat> Which has a greater density? A lake full of water or a cup full of water? Answer, letter D. They have the same density. Kasi pareho silang water. Okay? Pareho sila. Pare, pareho lang ang density. Ano ba ang density? Density is a mass over volume. Okay? This is calculated by means of getting the quotient of mass and volume. Kaya nakukuha ang density of water. Ang basis natin lagi is density of water which is 1, 1 gram per <coughs> cc, 1 gram per cubic. Basta 1 ang density ng water. Yan ang ating basis lagi. So same, ganun din, if you want to get the density, mass over volume. If you want to get the mass, anong gagawin? Multiply mo lang. Ito o, magkatabi sila. So, density times volume. If you want to get the volume, ito o, uh, naka-divide. Mass divided by density. Okay? O, interesting. Statistics. Next, number seven. <clears throat> A stainless steel spoon fills colder than a plastic spoon because stainless steel a absorbs less heat from that from the hand than a plastic does stainless steel is really colder than plastic stainless steel has a lower temperature than plastic stainless steel conducts heat away from the hand faster than plastic does. Okay. Correct answer is <clears throat> letter D. Conducts heat away from the hand faster than plastic does. Okay? This is on the concept of uh, heat I mean, conductors. Okay? Like, for example, um, conductors of heat, any material that allows electricity current to pass through, and then ito naman yung insulators, does not allow electric current to pass through it. Kaya, ato is still plastic. <clears throat> Few examples of conductors are silver, aluminum, iron. Pag mga insulators naman, plastic, paper, wood, rubber, and so on. Eight. Why is it not advisable to repeatedly open the door of a refrigerator? Of a refrigerator.
<clears throat> bakit minsan pinapagalitan mo yung bata kung laging bukas, uh, close, open, close, open ang refrigerator. Is it a waste stage in electrical energy? It will loosen the refrigerator's door. The warm air outside lowers the temperature inside, thus making the refrigerator less efficient. D. Repeated opening introduces bacteria into the refrigerator. Basically, it is A. Tama. Tama naman yung sabi nyo na, na tawag doon yung sa kuryente. Okay? Tama rin naman kasi itong letter C, pero hindi naman siya nagiging less efficient. Okay? Napapasok yung yung <coughs> yung hot I mean, the temperature of yung air doon tapos tataas hindi siya maglo-lower yung temperature Nine. if three light bulbs of different watts or wattages are connected in series to a battery which of the following will be true the resistance in each bulb will be the same. The current in each light bulb will be the same. The light output of each light bulb will be the same. The power consumed by each light bulb will be the same. Ano kaya ang the same doon? Series, series connection. Yung naka uh, <coughs> dugtong dugtong. Like, for example, um, Christmas tree. Yung isa lang yung kanyang, ano, uh, isa lang yung wire. Lahat ng bulbs. Let's check. Correct answer is letter <coughs> B. In series circuit, ito yung example ng, ito yung dalawang uh, circuits. Series, eto. Dugtong-dugtong yan. Parallel yung isa, yung uh, other type is parallel connection or parallel circuit. Eto naman ay magkaiba ang uh, hindi siya dugtong. Although, yung source ng electricity, paganyan siya. So, <clears throat> eto yung series. So, in a series circuit, the current passing in each resistor and each of the bulb or light bulb will be the same. Kaya ang nangyayari dyan, usually, pag nasira ito, sira na rin lahat. Kasi iisa yung kanilang uh, connection. But in parallel circuit, kahit masira itong isang bumbilya, meron pa din isa. Buhay pa din yung isa. Yun yung parallel connection. Okay? So, in here, in parallel circuits, the same terminals of both devices are connected together. Ayan. <clears throat> Pero minsan kasi may mga Christmas light na ang daming, uh, ang daming wires. Diba? Naka, uh, naka, naka, doon, nakatali tali Ibig sabihin nun, each of the bulb magkakaiba ang ang connection. Para pag nasira yung isa, iilaw pa din yung iba. Just like sa bahay din, hindi naman sa isang bahay, hindi naman lahat connected. Kasi pag ganun, pag nag, uh, nasi, nag, nag ang tawag dun, short circuit ka, patay lahat ng ilaw. Pero there are cases naman na let's say, Bakit kaya wala kaming ilaw sa kusina? Meron naman kami sa sa, uh, sa sa kwarto. Kasi hindi sila pareho ng hindi sila magka uh, connect. Okay? Although same terminal naman yung pinanggagalingan ng kuryente, pero kaya may mga kaya pag nagkaroon na short circuit, kailangan mong i-open yung circuit board para i taas mo ulit siya, i-on mo ulit. Okay? Pag nag-short circuit siya. Ibig sabihin, yung line na yun, hindi nga nakayanan. Kaya nag-automatic na shutdown. Okay? So, the answer is letter B. Same ang electricity na, or current rather. 
<coughs> 10. If three-fourths of the block of wood floating in water is below the surface of water, the density of this block of wood is... Oh, yung wood ang pinag-usapan dito ah, hindi yung water. Okay? Kasi kung yung density ng water, automatic 1 dapat yon. So, eto daw, yung 3 fourth ng block, nakasubmerge na sa water. So, anong ibig sabihin yan in terms of density? Greater than the density of water, more than half the density of water, equal to the density of water, less than half the density of water. 3 fourths daw siya. So, Answer is letter B. More than half. Kasi nga, three-fourths na yung naka-submerge sa tubig eh. So, whatever is the part of the floating object submerged in water, we are referring to the density of the object. Yun yung density na sinasabi. Kaya, di ba, mass over volume. Yun yung bigat niya compared sa volume ng uh, pinag-submersion mo, or especially the water or the volume of the the <clears throat> the medium so three fourths of the block is already submerged in water so its density is three fourth which is more than one half the density of mud i uh, more than half rather the density of water more than half na siya kaya three fourths yung nakalubog Okay, report your score, 1 over 10. Oh, 6, 6, 6, 7. So anyway, first natin review yan. Sana ulit-ulitin nyo ulit ito next time para ang makuha nyo na ay 10 over 10. Okay? <clears throat> Underst ano pa rin yan? Uh, acceptable pa rin kasi it's our first review. Kaya nga, mastery. Kaya nga tayo may tawag na mastery of the lesson. Imamaster nyo din yan. Kaya lahat ng mga practical test natin, lahat ng mga uh, practice test, drills, kung may time tayo, ulit-ulitin nyo for a greater chance of uh, mastery. Okay, let's proceed. Kasi dito naman sa chemistry, sa physics, mostly naman uh, application. Kaya itong mga question natin, puro application yan ng concept. Wala naman yung direct na tatanungin kung what is physics, what is force, di ba? Meron siguro, pero uh, syempre sa TOS, meron ding knowledge, meron comprehension na konti, but most of the questions will be Ah, uh, tawag doon, application, evaluation, synthesis, yung pinakamataas. Okay? <clears throat> Number 11. A razor blade can float on the surface of water because of surface tension, capillarity, buoyant force, liquid pressure. Same, ito din yung question yung, let's say, yung needle. Bakit means yung needle nagpo-float siya? Pero later on, magsisink din naman. Anong meron? Ito din yung mga cases ng mga lamok. Bakit yung lamok nakaka-ano sila? Uh, Nagsa-float sila sa tubig. Naglalakad lang sila dun sa tubig. Pa pareho din yung mga spiders. Okay? What is that concept in science? Okay, correct answer is letter A. We call it surface tension. 
Okay, what is surface tension? This is the property of liquids arising from uh, the molecular co cohesive forces. Meron kasing force at or near the surface. Kaya, ang ginagawa, di ba, nung nag-experiment kayo nung high school kayo or college, ang gagawin mo muna ay irarab mo muna yung needle sa cloth tapos ibigla mo siyang ilagay sa tubig. Magpo-float yun. Kasi, eto siya, magkakaroon ng mga forces. Tapos, tsaka siya, sasaluin nitong uh, tawag doon, buoyant force, yung force. Yung buoyant force, yung force din na nagkikip sa mga ships, yung mga bangka, bakit di sila nag, bakit di sila na nagsisink? Okay? So, in that example, as a result, the surface tends to contract resembling a you know a stretch elastic membrane so parang magkakaroon ng force dito siya uh, na, na parang bumabalot muna sa needle or razor blade or yung mga paanong mosquito or any fly and then yun yung reason kung bakit siya nagpo-flow regardless of their uh, kahit mas malaki ang density nila kaysa sa water okay despite their greater um, density than water. Okay? Pero pag nawala na yung surface tension, magsasubmerge din yan, malulunod din sila. Okay? Next, 12. Which of the following does not describe Describe the temperature of a given body. O, temperature naman siya. It is the total kinetic energy of the molecules of the body. The average kinetic energy of the molecules. Is it the measure of the hotness and coldness of the body? It is measured by thermometer. Ang question ay, which is not? which is not a description, a definition of tem temperature. <clears throat> Correct answer is, Siyempre kung titignan mo, oh, ano bang ginagamit sa pag-measure ng temperature? Thermometer. So, correct yung letter D. Ano bang kinukuha sa temperature? Yung, let's say, kung may sakit ka o wala, titignan mo yung hotness or coldness. Gusto mo nang malamig. So, anong temperature? Ang init-init, anong temperature? So, C, D is also correct. So, it's either A or B ang answer. Is it the total kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy? The correct answer here is letter A. A ang hindi correct. Kasi, when we speak of the total kinetic energy, yun na yung heat na sinasabi natin. Hindi na siya temperature. We call it as a heat. Okay? So, temperature is just the average kinetic energy of molecules of the body. Yung average lang, hindi yung totality. Okay? So, dapat hindi kayo malito doon. Pag total kasi, heat na ang pinag-uusapan doon. Thirteen. Which of the following explains why a housewife is able to hold the handle of a heated pan? Bakit nahawakan yung handle ng heated pan? <clears throat> the handle is made up of good insulator of heat. The handle has a very low thermal conductivity. The handle expands when heated. Bakit daw nahahawakan pa rin natin yung handle ng pan kahit nagduduto tayo? 
eh may mainit naman yung ano di ba lutuan so syempre the handle is made up of a good insulator of heat correct yun the handle as a very low thermal conductivity syempre pero minsan meron kasing mga lutuan na wala man lang nakalagay na di ba yung diretsong metal din Kaya kailangan mo pa ng pot holder. Mainit kasi yun. So, kailangan mo ng mga conduct, uh, tawag doon, insulators. So, the correct answer here is A. Except number 3, the handle expands when heated. Tama naman. <clears throat> Minsan kasi, ang lahat ng bagay, pag nai-heat, nag expand Okay? So, it, that's true. The most solid expand when heated. But this is not a good reason to tell that the expan expansion of the, let's say, this um, heated pad conducts heat. Okay? So, hindi yun ang reason. So, it's only 1 and 2. Next, 14. <clears throat> Which statement best explains why ice is a good refrigerant? It cools by evaporation, it absorbs heat while melting, it conducts heat quickly, it does not melt inside the refrigerator. Correct answer is letter B. Bakit kasi a substance becomes cold when heat is removed from that substance. Kaya, for example, when ice is placed in water, pag ilagay mo yung ice sa tubig, yung init ng tubig, ina-absorb niya yung lamig ng ice. Kasi natatanggal yung heat. That's why, si ice ay a good refrigerant siya kasi nag absorb siya ng heat while melting. Okay? nag absorb siya ng heat while melting. Tinatanggal niya yung... Kaya lumalamig yung tubig pag nilalagyan mo ng ice. Kasi yung original temperature ng tubig, inabsorb ni ice. Kumbaga, tinalo niya. Kaya yung lamig ni ice napunta sa water. So, nag absorb siya ng heat while melting. <clears throat> Hindi naman siya nagkakandak ng heat very quickly. Kasi ano naman yan, uh, gradual. It does not melt inside the refrigerator. So, hindi siya refrigerant. It cools by evaporation. Hindi naman siya nag-evaporate. Fifteen. Bats which are nocturnal can fly swiftly in the dark without bumping to a barrier. What must be the reason why? Bakit ang bilis nilang lumipad? Na, tapos hindi sila, kahit, walang, kahit total darkness, hindi sila na, nakakabump ng barrier. Siguro, meron man, siguro one over a million or one over a thousand bats. Yung, yung parang siyong alang na na tawag doon, nakabump siya sa sa wall, kaya nahulog, namatay, parang ganon. Pero usually, wala. Kaya rare case lang. So, anong meron sa mga bats? A. They have supersonic eyes in the dark. B. They project fluorescent light in the dark. C. They have sonar at the tip of the nose that emits sound waves. D. They are invisible in the dark. Ano kaya ang sagot? <clears throat> Answer is... Siguro maraming sumagot sa inyo yung they have supersonic eyes. 
which is wrong? The correct answer is letter C. <clears throat> Bakit hindi sila naka, na ano ba yung Tagalog ng na natutumba or na naka, nababangga yung pala? <laughs> Bakit hindi sila nababangga? Kasi darkness, na, da, very dark naman, pero ang bilis nilang lumipad. Because they have sonar, pag may say sonar, yung parang sound waves. Ito, wait. At kanyan. Sa tip ng kanilang nose, malayo pa lang, nag emit na ng sound waves para tingnan kung merong barrier. O kung, or kung may parating na mababangga. Tapos, itong sonar na ito, mag-reflect back. It will go back to the, to tell that there is a barrier in front. Kaya nakakaano sila nakaka-iwas kumbaga. Okay? So I repeat, the sonar at the tip of the nose of the bats emits sound waves. Sound waves, ha? hindi yung mata. Sound waves and these waves after hitting the barrier in front will be reflected and goes back to the sonar to tell that there is a barrier in front. So parang meron silang tawag doon, uh, Uh, special machine sa, kata- sa nose nila na nakatingin kung meron silang ma- mababangga o wala. Kaya, kasi nauna na yun kung baka yung sound waves. Kaya random nila kung may may parating, merong mababangga, ganon. So that is <clears throat> letter C. Yeah, parang radar. Pero pag usually pag radar kasi parang mata. Parang video yun eh. Ito kasi, sonar. Sonar naman yung parang sound. Kaya na, na, narinig na nila kaagad kung, kung meron silang mababangga. Okay? So, it is primarily because of the sonar at the tip of their nose. O, oh, diba? Parang mga trivia-trivia itong <laughs> pinagsasagot ninyo. 16. Which of the following statements is true for both sound and light waves? Sound and light waves. They can be both reflected. They both travel in medium. They both similar in wavelengths. They both travel as a longitudinal waves. Answer is letter A. <clears throat> Both can be reflected because reflection is a general property of wave. Ang lights and sounds nagtatravel yan through waves. Okay? So, both can be reflected. Kasi ang sound, di ba sabi natin kanina doon sa lightning and thunder, Sound cannot travel without a medium. But light, pwede siyang mag-travel kaya kahit walang medium. And then, sound and lights have different wavelengths. Kaya nauna nga yung, ano, di ba, yung light. And then, sound is longitudinal as compared to light, which is a transverse wave. Transverse wave ang tawag doon. Okay, so, 16, letter A, both can be reflected. 17. Where does visible light fall on the electromagnetic spectrum? Between infrared and ultraviolet radiations, between AM and FM radio waves, microwave and infrared radiation, between gamma rays and x-rays. Yung electromagnetic spectrum, ito yung <coughs> parang measure kung saan magiging visible ang light. Kasi may mga tendency kasi na uh, hindi na visible. Okay? Kasi hindi makatravel. Kasi waves yan, di ba? Ang satellite. Wave, ang sound, same is true with sound. Kaya ang mga choices, ito, AM and FM. Di ba narinig niyo sa mga radio? 
FM station, AM station. Kasi depende yan sa pag-travel ng wave. Kung mas mabilis, mas malakas yung yung channel, yung station. Kung let's say, let's say sa Philippines, yung channel 2, <coughs> sobrang sobrang clear. So ibig sabihin, malakas yung yung uh, yung waves. Okay, yung, yung pag-travel. Same is true with, with radio waves, yung radio stations. AM, FM. So, sa question, saan visible ang light sa electromagnetic spectrum? Correct answer is letter A. It is between infrared and ultraviolet radiation. Ito siya. <clears throat> Ito yung tinatawag natin electromagnetic spectrum. Spectrum. So, dito, visible ang mga light. Kaya nakakita tayo ng colors. Okay? In between ultraviolet rays and infrared rays. Okay? So, infrared kasi means uh, before red. So, dito, bago mag-red. Tapos, ultraviolet means beyond violet. Kaya dito beyond violet before mag-red. Yan ang ibig sabihin. Thus, uh, visible light from here, ito yung responsible for seeing an object. Bakit tayo nakakakita ng object? Bakit tayo nakakakita ng color? I mean, bakit natin sinasabi na red yan, blue yan, green? Kasi dito lang, dito nag-start yung capacity natin. It is located between infrared and ultraviolet radiations. Okay? So, this electromagnetic spectrum is the range of all types of uh, radiations. Okay? Yung sinasabi natin kanina na radio ranges, yung AM, FM na yan, kung AM kasi, uh, mas mababa. 5, let's say, yung kilohertz na siya. Di ba, naka, 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 naka Nakikinig ka sa radyo, di ba? Pag sinasabing uh, uh, 1,000 kilohertz, mga ganun siya. Ibig sabihin, AM radio, mas mababa. Kaya yun yung mga, uh, dati kasi nakikinig tayo sa mga drama-drama sa radio. Tapos pag FM station naman, yung mga music na very clear. Kasi higher ang spectrum nun. Yung megahertz naman ang ginagamit kilohertz sa AM FM megahertz kaya mas kumbaga mas mas malakas yung signal okay kaya FM station di ba FM station uh, ano ba yung mga station kaya dito sa Dubai yung Tag 1 ano ba Tag 91 point that is that is a uh, radio station so FM station so, anong ibig sabihin ng AM, FM? Amplitude modulation. Tapos yung FM, frequency modulation. Kaya, meron tayong mga ganyan. Kasi it deals with waves. It deals with sound. Okay? Ano na nga ba ulit yung science that deals with the study of sound? Since ni-discuss natin ang sound and lights, ano naman yung science that deals with the study of light? Alam niyo yan, nakikita niyo yan sa mga shops. Study of light is optics. Okay? The science that deals with the study of light is optic. Optics, kaya nga diba optical shop. Pupunta ako sa optical shop. Anong gagawin mo sa optical shop? Siyempre, para sa mga glasses, diba? lenses, kasi it deals with light. Now, ano naman yung science that deals with the study of sound? We call it acoustic. O, diba? Kaya pag sinabing, sige nga, patugtog ka nga ng acoustic songs. O, kasi pure na sound yun. Acoustic siya. Okay? So, the science is what we call as acoustics. Eighteen. <clears throat> what kind of mirror is best used as a side mirror in car? Or side mirrors in car. Concave, convex, 
plain irregular. O di ba yung may mga cars? Ano yung type ng anong meron sa side mirror? Di ba hindi siya plain na mirror? So hindi siya wrong yung letter C kasi hindi siya plain. Hindi rin siguro irregular kasi pag irregular uh, iba na yung yung dating, yung style. So it's either concave or convex mirror. Saan diyan yung paloob, saan yung palabas? Plain mirror, ito yung ginagamit natin pag titignan mo yung mukha mo. Kasi kung ano yung laki ng mukha mo, yung nakikita mo sa mirror. Kung ano yung lawak ng pores sa skin mo, yung nakikita mo sa mirror. Kasi plain lang siya. Walang effect. Okay? So, but in terms of side mirror sa car, ano kaya ang ginagamit? Tignan ko nga sa may mga cars kung nakuha nyo ang sagot. Correct answer is letter... <coughs> B. Convex mirror. Okay? Kasi, <coughs> eto, pag inward kasi, concave yun. Pag da, yung curve niya is outward, that's a convex mirror. Okay? Kasi sa convex, parang upright, virtual, it is located near the aperture of the mirror. Kasi, kaya, makikita mo kung yung car following you is near or far. Okay? Whereas, in, in concave kasi, minsan, deceiving siya kasi pa, paloob. So, parang minsan, there are cases na parang inverted or minsan walang image pag concave. E yung plain mirror naman, it's the same, sabi ko kanina, same size and distance kung anong titingnan mo sa mirror. Okay? So the correct answer there is convex <coughs> mirror. Ito siya. Pa labas. The curve is outward. Outward. Yan. Tama ba? Ako wala akong car pero ito yung <laughs> sagot. Okay, number 19. A rock is dropped out of the window of a moving car. Oh, tinapon mo daw yung rock. At the same time, a ball is dropped from rest from the same height. Oh, para sabay. Neglecting air resistance, which will reach the ground first. Parang ito yung example ng <clears throat> yung feather at saka sa basketball. Feather and basketball, punta ka sa 20th floor, i-drop mo silang pareho. Free fall. Sino sa kanila ang mag-reach ng ground na mauna if you will neglect air resistance? Okay, this is basic. Correct answer is, they will hit the, the ground at the same time. Bakit? Kasi may term dito na neglecting air resistance. Kaya walang uh, resistance siya. So, pareho sila. Kahit gaano kalaki, i, i, halimbawa, yung, yung feather at saka uh, bola, sabay mo silang i-drop. Kung walang resistance, pag ilagay mo sila sa vacuum na walang air, sabay silang maghihit sa ground. Pero syempre, kung may resistance, mauna yung mas mabigat. Mauna yung mas mabigat. Kaya, di ba, yung law of acceleration. Mas mauna siya, syempre, kasi ang bigat niya eh. Di ba? In free fall. But, kung merong term na neglecting air resistance, ibig sabihin, not considering the resistance, They will both hit the ground at the same time. Twenty. <clears throat> a piece of mud flies off from the rim of a bicycle wheel. In what direction will it be going 
immediately after leaving the wheel. Na na labi visualize niyo ito. So pa siya pumiikot yung wheel. Tapos meron daw mud. Tapos biglang natanggal yung mud. Anong direction niya? Is it on a line directly away from the center of the wheel? On a line that a tangent to the edge of the wheel? On a curved path moving around the wheel? Or on a straight line directed somewhere between the center and the edge? Parang example nito ay ano? Let's say, iikot ka sa runabout. O, oh, runabout. Paano kung na-miss mo yung pag-curve? saan ka, anong direction ng kotse mo. Kung may sinan mismo, ibig sabihin, hindi mo nasundan. <clears throat> Yan ang parang example. Hindi mo nasundan. What is your uh, direction? This is a concept of centripetal and centrifugal force. Another example is yung washing machine. Iikot ng washing machine. Correct answer A is tangent. Yung palabas siya. Okay? Ito. Centrifugal and centripetal force. Alimbawa, ito. Iikot mo yung bola. Yung bola may string. Iikot mong ganyan, paikot. Pag napigtas yung bola, anong direction niya? Ang direction niya is tangent. Dito siya, aalis siya, pag ganyan. It's or pag ganun. Hindi niya susundan yung paikot. Okay? Hindi niya susundan yung paikot. So, tangential siya. So, we call it centrifugal force. Yung paloob, centripetal force. Okay? Yung washing machine, for example, yan, paikot, ikot, ikot. Halimbawa, napigtas yung spinner. Dito siya na-stop. Siyempre, yung mga damit papunta doon. Okay? Hindi sila magpa-follow sa motion ng paikot. We call that as centrifugal force. Okay? Ganon din pag nag-round about ka. Yan. Mabilis yung ikot mo. Hindi mo na, na control. Hindi ka naka-turn na ganon. So, ang mangyayari dyan, it's either the diretso ka doon or pa ka. Okay? Tatapon ka doon or pag ganun. Hindi mo susundan. Yung kotse mo, hindi nyo susundan yung runabout. Because of that, centrifugal and centripetal force. Okay? <clears throat> so, centripetal directed towards the axis of rotation. Ito, palo. Toward. Pag centrifugal is away from the center of the circle. Diba? Nararamdaman nyo naman yan, di ba? Pag, let's say, biglang nag-sharp curve yung kotse. Di ba yung tendency ng katawan mo ay lalabas? Di ba? Nararamdaman nyo yun? Let's say, biglang curve yung sasakyan. Hindi naman yung katawan nyo ay magka-curve din. Hindi. Palabas yung katawan nyo pag ganun. And that is a centrifugal force. Diba? Pa o pa. Against siya. Directed away. So, the correct answer is letter B. Okay. Report your score. Over 10. Over 10. <clears throat> Let's see. Hala, 3, 4, 4. O kaya kailangan niya magbasa-basa. Okay. okay lang naman yan. Mangkuha niyo rin yan pag ano. Uh, practice makes permanent. Diba? Hindi practice makes perfect. Permanent dapat yun. Kasi nagmamastery ka eh, di ba? Of course, goal mo pa din yung perfect. Pero mas maganda yung practice makes permanent para naiiwan pa rin doon. Mastery. Tawag doon. 
Okay, let's proceed. 21. <clears throat> Two people on a rope in a tug of war each pull with a 400 newton force. What is the tension in the rope? What is the tension in the rope? Tension means uh, yung lakas na na nag-exert <clears throat> let's say dalawang tao A and B naghihilaan sila sa sa rope sa tag of war na game and each of these two 400 newtons ang kanilang force na ini-exert yung lakas na binibigay ano ang tension in the rope <clears throat> This is on a topic of equilibrium. We have B, 400 din. Diba? So, halimbawa, ito. Hmm. Pag 200, 200, ang in-apply nila, yung, nasa, yung force dito is 200 din. Okay? Nagka-cancel, kumbaga. However, kung ganito naman ang mangyayari, depende kung, let's say, dito sa group A, group B, 50 kg la lang, tapos 40 kg. Dito naman, 40 and 70. So, ibig sabihin, lamang dito ng 110 dito, eto 90. Lamang sila ng 20 kilos. So, malamang mas malaki yung share nila pag naghilaan 80 newtons 70 newtons lang doon so ang tension diyan mas malaki yung dito sa group B okay the tension in the cord bakit kasi sa pag-solve ng sa equilibrium kino-consider pa yung second law na force is equal to mass times acceleration okay so, kinoconsider yung mass dito. So, definitely, uh, ang mangyayari dyan, hindi na gitna yung pag naghilaan, mas may tendency na hanggang dito yung may hila ni group B. Kasi, mas malaki yung force na kinocontribute nilang dalawa sa paghila sa rope. Okay? So, eto kasi, Acceleration is equal to net force divided by the total mass. Kinoconsider pa rin yung kanilang masses. Okay? Pero pag equal, same ang tension. Kung ano in-apply nilang force, yun yung tension. Next. 22. Why are shadows formed? Light travels through opaque objects. Light is reflected. Light is refracted. Light travels in a straight line. Tingnan ko nga kung alam mo bakit may shadow tayo. Yung opaque objects, ito yung parang nagbabarrier, kumbaga, parang na, uh, ano, other term for barrier, nagbabarrier siya sa light, kaya hindi makapass through yung light. Yan. Pero si light daw travels through opaque object. Answer, <clears throat> letter, D. Because light travels in a straight line. Yan siya. O, ito ang bawa. <clears throat> ito yung object mo. Yun yung opaque object. So, pag nag-flashlight ka, ang makikita mo yung shadow niya. Kasi, ito yan eh. Straight yan. Straight line yan. Okay. So, shadows are formed because light travels in straight lines. Even if uh, when an opaque object or material is placed 
in the path of this ano light the rays of this light the object eto blocks the light to pass through it yun na yun therefore it forms shadow yung shadow ni object na yun okay kasi hindi makapass through yung light sa ano eh sa uh, object because yung light nag straight line dapat lang siya hindi siya nagre-reflect hindi siya nagre-refract so instead straight line okay so dahil straight line ang pag-travel ni light kaya meron tayong shadow Twenty-three. <clears throat> Archimedes principle states that an object is buoyed up by a force that is equal to the flux. The Archimedes principle, the buoyancy, ato yung mga yung reason kung bakit <clears throat> nakuha float yung mga ships, yung mga boats sa dagat. If you if you remember yung yung kwento kwento yung bakit may word na yorika, di ba? Yorika means I found it, di ba? Yun yung sinigaw ni Archimedes noong yung <coughs> sabi niya I found it. Yung parang ang kwento nun is, kung maalala nyo yung science nyo nung grade 7, <coughs> or science nung, nung college kayo, uh, they will determine kung yung crown ng king ay pure gold or not. So sa kaisip niya, titingnan niya yung crown, tapos, uh, ano to, isang version lang to. Tapos, nahul, biglang nahulog yung crown nung nandun siya sa bathtub. So, nakita niya, nag-splash nag, splash yung water nung nahulog yung crown. Tapos, tinan niya, nabawasan yung tubig kasi may, mayroong tubig na lumabas. So, kaya, ito yung Archimedes Principle na Water Displacement Method. <clears throat> okay. Water displacement method. So, ang sagot dito is yung buoyed up by a force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Letter B. Weight of the fluid displaced. Kaya sabi niya, yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. So, in this example, halimbawa ito, yung ice, ilagay mo dun. Aangat yung too big na original original uh, measurement okay because of the weight of the ice cube so archimedes principle states that a body immersed in a fluid experiences an act thrust equal to ito, equal to the weight of the fluid displaced kaya ikaw halimbawa uh, jajump ka sa swimming pool E puno yung swimming pool, kumbaga. So, syempre, maraming tubig na lalabas. Okay? Kasi, that is equivalent to your uh, weight. I mean, yeah, your weight is equal to the fluid, the weight of the fluid displaced. Okay? And this Archimedes principle, na sabi ko kanina, is very fundamental to the equilibrium of a body. Bakit nababalance ng body? Floating in still water. That that a body floating freely in still water experiences a downward force acting on it due to gravity. Kaya ano muna yung buoyant force na sinasabi? Buoyant force. So letter B. <coughs> Archimedes, ang tandaan doon is water displacement method. Pwede rin yung buoyant force. Water displacement means yung na-displace na too big. 24. When you carry a heavy load with one arm, oh, imagine nyo to. 
you tend to hold your free hand away from your body. Halimbawa, pag nagki-carry ka, nasubukan nyo bang mag mag tawag doon? Mag-igib ng tubig gamit ang pail, timba? Diba? Okay. Hindi naman siguro dalawang kamay ang ginagamit doon. Diba? Pag, pag binuhat mo yung timba sa isang kamay, anong na-observe mo sa isang kamay mo? Diba? Inaangat mo siya para lumayo sa katawan. Kung hindi observe kasi hindi kayo scientist. Hindi kayo keen observer. So, ano kaya ang reason? A. To change the weight of your body and the load. B. To change the mass of your body. O, explain ko na kanina ang weight and mass. C. To be ready to grab something in case you fall. And D. To change the center of gravity of your body and the load. Ano kayang sagot? Na, na, ginagawa nyo yun, hindi nyo lang napapansin, hindi nyo lang pinapakialaman. Kahit magbuhat ka ng isang, isa, sa isang kamay, mag-automatic na yung kamay mo ay aangat. Yung isang kamay. Lalayo siya, ilalayo mo siya sa katawan. Because of letter D. <clears throat> This is a concept of center of gravity. Para Uh, lumayo yung center of gravity mo to change. Kasi ang center of gravity, is, syempre, yung pinakasentro ng katawan. Uh, when we speak of center of gravity kasi, yan. This is the point where the mass of your body is concentrated. Kaya depende rin yan sa build ng katawan. May mga katawan na mas mabigat sa taas, pababa naman ay show, I mean, magaan. Parang gano'n din. Yung, yung mga ma, lagi natutumba. Meron din yung uh, ang gaan baba, pero sa upper extremities, medyo, I mean, mabigat sa baba, pero sa upper extremities, medyo magaan. So, sila yung stable. Kahit itulak-tulak mo, hindi natutumba. Kasi, ang center of gravity nila is the point where the mass of the body is concentrated. Kaya pag ganito, pag nag-carry ka ng bata, ang tendency mo ay yuyuko. Para yung center of gravity mo kasi ma-i-balance ma doon sa weight ng bata. Dito din, o ito yung example. Kung nag-carry ka dito, medyo usually itong kamay mo, iangat mo ng konti, ilalayo mo siya. Para ma-balance. Okay? Para ma-balance mo. Kaya ang center of gravity mo, i-lapit mo doon sa load. Ito din, pag nagkikerry ka ng books, medyo pa ganun ka, pa tawag doon? Uh, anong tawag doon? Liliyad konti. Kasi meron kang load dito. Ilalapit mo kasi yung center of gravity doon sa load. <coughs> Kaya yung pagbuhat mo ng, ng timba dito, ilalapit mo yung center of gravity. Kaya itong kamay mo, i-away mo siya, ilalayo mo konti para yung bigat mapunta dito. Did you get the point? Okay? So, I repeat, COG or CG or center of gravity, it is the point where the mass of the body is concentrated. Pero usually, dito tayo sa may navel part. Diyan nakakoncentrate yung ating center of gravity. Okay? 25. <clears throat> Why is a dam built wider at the bottom than at the top? Nakita nga ba kayo ng dam? O, di ba yung Lamesa Dam, Pantabangan Dam, sa Pilipinas. A. To withstand the greater pressure at the bottom. To balance the pressure at the top, it holds up the dam better than at the center. It anchors the dam better. Answer A. To withstand the greater pressure at the bottom. Yeah, ganyan. 
bakit uh, wider yung sa baba? <coughs> Kasi habang pababa, greater ang pressure habang papalalim kumbaga. Kaya kung hindi siya mas ma kung hindi siya wider, mag-explode, magigib up yung dam. Kaya kung ikaw ay civil engineer or let's say architect, ang dam lagi ay ganyan ang tile. Because the pressure of water stored in the dam increases with the depth, yung lalim. So, the bottom of the dam is broader, uh, wider to support the increase in water pressure. Yun ang reason doon. Pressure. Water pressure. Because the pressure exerted by liquids increases habang papalalim. So, as the depth increases, more pressure is applied to the walls. Kaya minsan, yung mga wall din niya, thicker sa baba. Kaya marami siyang mga walls, kaysa sa taas. Okay? So, that is why walls are made thicker at the bottom so they can handle the pressure exerted by water. Ganun din. Ganun din sa pag-construct ng swimming pool. Thicker ang walls niya sa baba. 26. <clears throat> Which of the following statements represents a physical change? O parang chemistry na ito. Physical change. Pero sa physics, meron din physical chemical change. A. An antacid tablet forms bubbles when dissolved in water. A flashlight beam slowly gets dimmer and finally dies out over time. The loan grows thicker every day because fertilizers were added into the soil. And D. Frozen mango juice melted when left standing at the room temperature for 30 minutes. Physical change. Okay, obviously, answer is letter D. Packet letter D. Kasi sa ke ke uh, phys chemical and physical change, pag physical change, matter changes in form but not the chemical identity. Halimbawa, melting, yung ice, naging solid siya, naging liquid, pero tubig pa din. So, physical change yun. Yung papel, ginupit-gupit mo siya, nag-change nga ng anyo, pero papel pa din. Pero, pag sinunog mo yung papel, hindi na siya papel, naging ash na siya. So, that becomes a chemical change. Next, boiling. Nag-boil ka ng water. After boiling, water pa din, chopping, and so on. Whereas in chemical change, there is a chemical reaction forms, I mean, uh, that forms new products. Ayan, yung combustion, burning, rotting of fruits. Yung fruits, pag nag yun, hindi na siya fruits after. Nag-iba na siya. I mean, meron siyang chemical react combinations. Rusting of iron. Digestion. Siyempre, pag kinain mo yung, let's say, banana, hindi naman siya lalabas na banana pa din because of digestion. Okay? So, kung nag-form ng new product, that is a chemical change. In the example a while ago, yung mango juice, nag-melt lang siya after 30 minutes. Same pa din. Wala nang bago. Juice pa din siya. 27. <clears throat> the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. What is the fourth state of matter? Cell, Bose-Einstein condensate, plasma, quarks. O kasi nasa modern na kayo. Kalimutan niyo na yung three states of matter na pinag-aralan niyo nung elementary pa kayo. <clears throat> Actually, five na states of matter. Answer, ang fourth state is plasma. Ang fifth state is BEC. Yan yung Bose-Einstein condensate. 
Okay? Si Bose tsaka si Einstein. Hindi sila ang nag-discover pero sila nag-introduce before nung 1924 pa yon Yung idea, lumabas na yan. Uh, <clears throat> tinuloy lang na tiniscover noong 19, uh, let's say 1995 ba yata? O kasi nung ang nag-aaral ako, wala pa. Three states of matter pa lang. So, <clears throat> plasma is the fourth. Ito. Kaya, alam niyo yung mga plasma TV, nung nag-uso ang plasma TV, pag hinawakan mo yung TV sa screen, di ba parang merong liquid na hindi naman siya liquid. Di ba? Pag ginaganon mo siya, that is highly ionized gas. Yun yung plasma. Ang plasma and condensates, itong fourth and fifth states of matter, ano sila? Uh, na-discover sila through the absolute uh, zero temperature. Kung high, high temperature siya sa plasma, okay? ionized gas. Pero pag very, very low temperature naman, doon naman nabubuo ang BEC, yung condensate. Okay? So, <clears throat> ang tawag doon, uh, gas of ions and free electrons, eto sa, sa plasma. etong BEC condensate naman, eto yung gas at low densities, uh, cooled at very low temperature, which is close to absolute zero. Okay? And then, the normal solid, liquid, and gas. Mm. Diba? 28. The lowest possible temperature that a substance can reach is O yun, kaya sasabi ko lang Letter C, absolute zero What does it mean when I say absolute zero in terms of temperature? It is marked as zero degree Celsius Or 273 Kelvin Or pwede rin 460 degree, negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit Okay Uh, or negative 273 degrees Celsius. Tapos kung Fahrenheit naman, ayun, negative 460 on the Fahrenheit scale. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng absolute zero temperature. Kaya, possible na may mga negative na temperature. Hindi ibig sabihin na zero, yun yung freezing point yun lang yung point kung saan mag-freeze ang isang object. Pero, pwede pang mas malamig doon. Di ba? May mga places pa na negative ang temperature. So, pinakamababa doon is negative 273 degree Celsius. 29. <laughs> An object becomes positively charged if it o, oh, ito sa atoms. Gains protons, gains electrons, loses, uh, loses protons, D, uh, loses electrons. Sa ano to, sa sharing. Yung pag-combine ng elements. Nagiging positively charged kung si share ba siya ng electron or tumatanggap ng electron. si share siya ng proton or tumatanggap siya ng proton. Nagdo-donate parang ganoon. Correct answer is letter D. Okay, ito yung sa atom. 'Di ba? Sa loob kasi nandoon yung proton and neutrons sa nucleus of an atom. Yung nasa labas, yun yung electron. Okay? So an object becomes positively charged when it is with, when it uh, loses electrons so that the number of protons is greater than the number of electrons. Uh, paano ba to? Ma-appreciate nyo to sa uh, ng bonding, yung chemical bonding, ionic covalent bonding, yung sharing of electrons kasi sa electron configuration and so on. <clears throat> Kasi, 
Itong electron siya ang nasa labas. So, ito lang yung pwedeng mag-transfer. Okay? Or from the atoms, hindi yung protons. Yung protons kasi nasa loob na siya eh, di ba? So, si electron ang mag-donate. Kaya, mawawalan siya ng electron. So, pag nag-gain ng protons, hindi siya positive. In, hindi, hindi naman, sir. Kasi, nakafix na kasi yung proton dito sa loob sa atom kasi. Okay? Hindi pwedeng, uh, tawag doon, Ah, wait. Pag nag-gain siya ng protons, hindi. Hindi siya positive. Kasi ang taga-donate lang talaga is electrons. Kasi siya yung nasa labas. Kaya lagi, yung mga elements na may mga... Uh, okay, later on, pag nag-ano tayo sa configuration. Pag yung mga <coughs> elements na uh, sa periodic table... Meron talaga yung part na sila lang yung nagdo-donate ng electrons para, let's say, sa octet rule, para mabuo yung rule of eight, para maging stable yung compound pag pinag-combine mo yung sa, yung sa elements together. Okay? So, pag ito yung component ng, at, ano, ng, <clears throat> ng atom, yung number of protons ay pareho sa atomic number niya. So, kung ang, ang fluorine, 17, kumbaga, 17 din ang kanyang protons, 17 din ang kanyang electrons. Tapos, yung bigat nila, just add the two. Protons plus <coughs> neutrons naman. Thirty. Why does a pressure cook, cooker cook food faster? O bakit tayo gumagamit ng, ng pressure cooker? Sagot. Letter <coughs> A. 2 and 3. Kasi, syempre, nag increase ang kanyang uh, boiling point of water. Kasi pag sa pressure cooker, hindi lang siya 100 degrees, kundi umaabot pa siya ng 121 degrees Celsius. That means, food can cook at, at, at a much higher temperature kung yun ang mangyayari. Okay? And so, it speeds up at higher temperature. Therefore, it can cook the food faster. Kaya itong 2 and 3. Hindi naman nagbo-boil faster eh. Inire-raise lang niya yung boiling point at saka yung uh, cooking temperature of the food. It is tightly closed. As, ganun, kaya nga pressure cooker, di ba? Kasi uh, pressurized siya. Kasi kung merong, merong extra air na papasok, hindi na siya pressure cooker. So, dapat lang talaga na tightly closed naman talaga. So, it's only 2 and 3. <clears throat> okay, report your score. May hirap ba? Kasi... Ano lang naman eh, analysis kasi ito, puro tayo si uh, application, kumbaga. Kasi kailangan talaga ninyong mag-analyze. I-apply yung mga uh, concepts. Okay, let's continue. 
31. <coughs> Thirty pa din. Okay, hindi natin consider to kasi thirty. <clears throat> Which of the following best explains why farmers burn rice, straw, and hull during seasons of harvest? Siyempre, ang sagot dyan is letter D para maging uh, to neutralize the acidic soil para, para more crops will grow. Para ma-improve yung soil. Okay, dito tayo start Thirty-one. <clears throat> The direct transformation of a solid into the gas phase without passing through the liquid phase is called subly, compression, evaporation, freeze drying. Solid to gas. For example, yung ano mga example? Solid to gas. Uh, Naptalin ball. Ano yung naptalin ball? Inilalagay nyo sa cabinet para pampatay ng mga tipis, pan panakot ng taga, mga ganun, na mabango, di ba? O, bilog yun pag nilagay mo doon. Pero, after a while, mawawala. That's an example of this phase change. Yeah, dry ice. Answer is, <coughs> letter A, sublimation, tawag doon. So, let's go over the different phase changes. Pag yung solid naging liquid, we call it melting. Ito, oh, nag-melt siya. Like ice. Pag yung liquid naman naging gas, we call it vaporization, pwede rin evaporation. Okay? Like yung formation ng clouds. Ganon. Tapos yung gas na initan, na highly ionized siya, ionization, naging plasma, ionization process yun. Okay? Now, let's have yung pabalik. Yung gas, naging liquid, halimbawa, yung clouds, naging ulan. <clears throat> Condensation. Yan, pababa. Condensation. Tapos yung liquid, naging solid ulit, like kung gumagawa ka ng ice, that is freezing. Okay? Freezing. Sometimes we call it solidification kasi naging solid siya. Okay? Pero yung solid, naging gas kaagad, kagaya ng example, we call it sublimation. Pero yung gas, kabaliktaran, naging solid, we call it deposition. Okay? Deposition. So, these are the different phase changes. 32. Which laboratory equipment is used to find whether a ring is genuine or fake? Platform balance, graduated cylinder, beaker. Alam nyo bang itsura ng mga yan? O dapat alam nyo naman. Is it A, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 1, 2, 3? Answer, C, 1 and 2. Siyempre, to determine if the, the authenticity of the ring, you need to measure the density. Yung bigat niya over a volume. So, <clears throat> paano ba measure ang density, ano mga kailangan na material. Since density is mass over volume, so the needed materials are, siyempre, platform balance to measure the mass. Kailangan mo munang i-measure siya, i-tawag doon, kiluhin ang bigat niya. And then, graduated cylinder to measure the volume by displacement method, di ba? yung water displacement. So, ang gagamitin mo doon are platform balance and graduated cylinder. Hindi ka nagagamit ng beaker. 33. A radioactive sample has a mass of 16 grams 
and its half-life is 10 days. What mass of the original sample remains after 20 days? Oh, ito ay concept ng half-life. Yung sa chemistry, yung mga uh, carbon dating, mga ganun. Kung nababasa yung mga term na half-life, what is it all about? So, 16 daw ang kanyang uh, mass originally. Pero ang half-life niya is 10 days. Ano ang kanyang mass after 20 days? <clears throat> Answer. C, 4 grams. Bakit? Kasi basic naman yan. The problem tells that half-life of the given radioactive sample is 10 days. Kasi ang concept ng half-life, yung hati. So, ibig sabihin, after 10 days, yung mass niya ay magiging 16 grams. I mean, yeah, 8 grams na ang half niya after 10 days. Kasi half-life, uh, 16 ang kanyang original. Ang half-life niya is 10 days. So, ibig sabihin, after 10 days, magiging 8 grams na lang siya. So, after 20 days, it follows that after 20 days, the mass of the sample becomes 4 grams na lang. Kuha nyo. So, <clears throat> ito yung mga concept na, ano, na regarding half-life. Because half-life, per se, is the length of time it takes for half of the radioactive atoms per specific radio, I mean, uh, yeah, for decay, to decay. Okay, so, <clears throat> it is sometimes it is uh, defined as the time required for half of the atoms of a radioactive substance to become disintegrated or to reduce to half of its initial value. Kaya tinawag na half-life. Kaya ang mga elements, meron silang half-life na tinatawag. Like uh, carbon, carbon-14, nitrogen-14, ang half-life nila is 5,000 plus years. Kaya hindi yan mawawala. Mab kumbaga, uh, hindi siya magdi-disintegrate. Okay? Yan, oh, may billion pa. So, I repeat, pag half-life yung kalahati. 34. Which warning label indicates a chemical property of being of the material being labeled. Chemical property. Fragile, handle with care, shake well, flammable. Obviously, kasi chemical property yan, it's letter D, flammable. Diba? Kasi pag fragile lang, handle with care, or shake well, these labels show the physical property of the material. Kasi ang tinata ang inano lang yan is the composition of the material remains. Pero pag flammability kasi it is a chemical property because after burning the composition of the mat uh, after burning its composition the material changes. Kaya flammable a chemical property. <coughs> Which of the following subatomic particles are located in the nucleus of an atom? Ayun, yung drawing natin kanina. Kaya ano yung nasa loob? Dalawa kasi nasa loob, yung isa nasa labas. Letter A, protons and neutrons. Ito yung drawing kanina, yan, nasa loob. Yung labas ang electron, siya ang negative. <clears throat> oh, sample 36 Uranium 238 Ang kanyang bigat Has an atomic number of 92 It can be inferred that this atom has How many protons, electrons, neutrons?
C. Bakit C? Okay. <clears throat> Balikan natin yung kanina, eto. Kung ano yung atomic number, yun na rin yung number of protons. Kung ano yung number of protons, yun din yung number ng electrons. Okay? Yun din ang number ng electrons. This is for a neutral element. So, balikan natin dito. Ang atomic number ni uranium ay 92. So, ang kanyang proton, 92. Ang electron niya, 92 din. Now, ang kanyang mass number, yung bigat niya, is proton plus neutron. So, eto, ang bigat ni uranium ay 238. So, ibig sabihin, i-minus mo siya ng 92 kasi ang mass number niya is proton plus neutron. Ang hinahanap natin ay neutron. Ilan ang neutron? So, 238 minus 92 para makuha mo yung neutrons which is 146. Okay? <clears throat> 146. Tandaan, ito. Ang atomic number niya, yung pagkakaari, salimbawa, hydrogen, 1. 1 ang kanyang uh, number of protons, 1 ang kanyang number of electrons. So, ano naman ang <clears throat> number of neutron ni, ni hydrogen na may 1? Ang tawag doon, na may 1 na atomic number. So, since 1 din ang kanyang bigat, kaya number 1 siya sa listahan, i-minus mo yung proton, ang kanyang neutron ay magiging 0. Ganon din dito sa helium. Okay, helium is 2. So, ang kanyang proton ay 2, electrons ay 2. Since ang kanyang bigat ay 4, 4 minus proton 2 is 2 dapat ito. Hindi siya, hindi, hindi lang nalagay. Neutron niya is 2. Thirty-seven. <clears throat> the horizontal row of elements on the periodic table is known as group or family, size, atomic number, period, or series. So, hindi naman siya atomic number kasi hindi yun yung horizontal row, yung pag -anon. Hindi rin siya size. So, it's either group or period. We call it Di ba nakikita nyo doon yung family? Uh, carbon family, alkaline family. Yun yung vertical. Horizontal is the period. Let's say, ito yung, so D ang correct answer. Ito yung periodic table. So, etong 1 to 7 na to are the period. So, period 1, period 2, Ganyan. Yung mga vertical naman, we call it family. Family or group. Group 1A, 2A, 3B, ganyan. 4A, 4B. Okay. So, horizontal row are period or series. Yung pababa is group or family. Kung marunong kang mag-electron configuration, alam mo kaagad kung anong group, ano ang family ni element. Okay? <coughs> we'll do that in one, I one of the items here. 38. According to the modern periodic law, the chemical property of the elements are periodic functions of their... Kasi yung modern periodic table, na-arrange na siya. So, the chemical property of the elements are periodic functions of their letter <coughs> B, atomic number. 
Kaya na-arrange na siya as is. Na let's say ito. 1, 2, 100, 3. 111. 111. Kung kahit kaano mang karami yan. So, na-arrange na siya. Okay? It was arranged already <coughs> based on the chemical property of the elements. Kaya in-arrange siya. Kasi, nung mga unang arrangement ng elements sa periodic table, hindi yan ganito. Kaya, ito yung, ito yung last na arrangement na ginagamit. The modern, kaya tinawag na modern periodic table. Okay? So, it is based on atomic number. 39. Ito yung sinasabi ko. <clears throat> If an element has an atomic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, what family in the periodic table does this element belong? O, nakatandaan nyo pa ba yan? Yung electron configuration... Okay. Correct answer is carbon family. How? Tingnan natin. So, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. I-add mo lang yung mga el yung electrons, yung last na sa last shell. So, 2, 2, and 2, 6. So, this is, this element has 6. So, titignan mo kung sino ang may 6. Ito, si carbon. Carbon 4A, nasa family siya ng 4A. We call this family as carbon family. Kasi si carbon ang nangunguna dito. Okay, nakuha nyo. <coughs> sa electron configuration, kung maalala nyo ito, yan. Yung electron configuration chart na yan. Okay. Uh, tapos anong tawag doon anong ano yung horizontal row kanina period di ba family siya ng carbon 4 kasi 4 yung la, yung electrons na eto okay, start natin uh, saan ba yung ano okay assuming na si yung yung element ay may 6 and that is carbon okay carbon 6 pag gumawa ka ng electron configuration ng 6 kailangan mong i-distribute yung 6 na electrons ni carbon yung atomic number niya so paano <clears throat> kailangan mong i-fill up lahat muna ito accordingly kaya si 1s every s can hold 2 electrons Every P can hold 6 electrons, D, 10 electrons, and meron pa, F. Si F can hold 14 electrons. SPDF. Okay. Si carbon na 6, kailangan mong i-distribute yung electrons. Diyan, na anim. So, saan siya? Itong 1S, complete niya yan. Kaya 1S, 2. Bakit 2? Kasi si S, 2 lang ang kaya ng hawakang electrons. Next, susunod ay 2S. S ulit siya, so dalawang electrons din ang kaya ng hawakan. Susunod is P. Ito, P. Si P, 6 ang kaya ng hawakan. Kaya lang, ang natitira na lang na electrons na i-distribute ay 2 na lang. Kaya, 2 ang ilagay mo dyan. So, yan yung electron configuration ng carbon. So, ano ang last shell na ginamit? 2. Ilan ang electrons sa may 2? We have 4. 2 plus 2. Kaya, nasa family siya ng 4. 4A. A 4, family. Now, yung last shell na ginamit ay 2. Ito, 2. So, ibig sabihin, nasa period 2 siya. Nasa period 2. Okay? Let's check. Ito yung period number 2. Nandito ba si carbon? Yes, nandun siya. 
Ito naman si Family 4, kaya nasa Family 4 siya. Okay, let's have one more example. Let's take for example, <clears throat> uh, sa configuration, balik tayo doon. Chlorine 17. <clears throat> okay pa kayo? Chlorine 17, ang halimbawa. CL, which has 17 atomic number. So, ibig sabihin, 17 din ang kanyang electrons, 17 din ang kanyang protons. So, 17 electrons ang kailangan natin i-distribute. <coughs> okay. Yung paggawa ng electron configuration, pag ganun yan ha, 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S. Follow mo lang yung arrow. Okay. So, 17 ang didistribute natin kasi 17 si Chlorine. So, ma-accomplish niya yung 1S2. Lahat ng S, 2 ang ilagay kung meron pang electrons. Okay. Next, sumunod. 2S. So, 2S2. Next, 2P. Ilan ang kayang i-hold ni P? 6. So, susulat ko dito, 2P6. Susunod, 3S. 3S2 ulit. Kasi ang kayang i-hold ni S ay 2. <clears throat> Anong susunod? P. So, ano, ilan ang kaya ni P na i-hold? 6. But, bilangin mo kung ilan ang na-distribute mo. 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6 is 10. 2, 7, uh, 12. So, 5 na lang ilagay ko dito. Kasi, 17 lang yung dinidistribute nating electrons. So, we have 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10 plus 2, 12 plus 5, 17. So, ito yung electron configuration ng chlorine 17. Okay, now, Ano ang last shell na ginamit? Shell na sinasabi, ito, itong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> ang last shell ay 3. Ibig sabihin, nasa period number 3 siya. Tignan natin mamaya. Take note of that. Period number 3. Now, <clears throat> in the 3 shell na yan, ilan ang el merong electrons? <clears throat> Ilang electrons meron sa third shell? We have 7. Ito, 2 and 5, 7. Therefore, nasa family or group 7 siya. Okay? Nasa family or group 7. Tingnan natin sa periodic table. Uh. Ito ang period 3. Correct? Tingnan natin kung nandito. Sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. Doon siya. Tama. Family 7. Ito rin siya. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ito, 7A. Family 7 siya. Diba? Correct. Tama. So, ito kasing mga ginagawa din sa electron configuration. Ito din yung kaya niyang acyclorine, ang kaya niyang ibigay na electrons ay 7. Ang kaya niyang i-donate. It's either 2 or 5. Pwede rin 5, pwede 2. Ang kaya niyang i-donate. Para maging stable yung isang pinakahalo mong chemicals, kumbaga. Yung compound. Okay? <laughs> Pagod. Okay, Kerry? Oh, sana na intindihan. Chemistry. 40. <laughs> Which of the following is extensive property of matter? Extensive. Weight, melting point, specific gravity, color. Siyempre, it's weight. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin na extensive property? 
extensive depend on how much a matter sample contains. Ito yung amount of the material. While intensive depends on the quality of the material. Okay? So, intensive, quality, extensive, quantity. Bakit extensive ang weight? <clears throat> Kasi it depends on the amount of force exerted. Di ba, paano sinosolve ang weight again? Mass times gravity. So, it depends on the amount of force exerted by the earth on that particular object. Nagdidepend siya doon sa, sa <coughs> amount of force. So, eto. Ang mga intensive, temperature, boiling point, concentration, luster. Pero mga extensive, yan. Weight, length, volume, and so on. Okay. Report for score. Yeah, kailangan nyo pang galingan. Okay. Last batch, 41. Tabusin lang natin to. 50 lang naman to. Mahaba palang ginugugol pag yun explain <clears throat> 41. A given gas occupies 2,000 cc cubic centimeter at pressure of 90 centimeters of mercury. What volume will the same gas occupy if the pressure becomes one half the original pressure? O, di ba? Parang, <laughs> paano kasi solve yan? Mga ganang siguro unang makukuha nyo. I mean, <clears throat> reaction. Okay. Pag may mga ganyang problem sa chemistry, ano kasi yan is a gas loss. Chemistry, ang computation naman niya is the gas loss or kung may mga substances naman, yung mga moles, sa ano naman yon sa concentration of solutions. Pero hindi naman masyadong nagbibigay ng mga yung molarity, molality, normality. Kasi uh, masyadong masolve yun. Pero hindi ko lang alam kung may ibibigay. Now, pag ganitong mga problems, this is <clears throat> on gas loss. Okay? Gas loss yan. Now, kung babalikan natin yung gas loss, ito yon, Okay? Kahit ito lang yung memorize nyo. Pag, give, pag ang mga given na quantities doon ay pressure and volume, boils loss siya. Okay? <clears throat> Usually kasi sa problem na ganyan, sasabi, ang, ang mga sa chemistry, ang minimension lang naman dyan ay pressure, volume, and temperature. Okay? Pag sinabing volume and pressure, constant yung temperature. Usually, sinasabi doon, at constant temperature, blah, 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 pressure, blah, 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 volume. What is the volume block? So, ang i-attack mo dyan, si Boyle's Law. So, ganyan lang ang formula. Paano makukuha? Divide both equation para makuha mo yung unknown. Okay? Halimbawa, P1, V1, ang hinahalap natin ay P2. Anong gagawin pag ganyan? O, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. O, pag pressure 2 ang hinahanap, i-divide mo siya ng V2 on both equation, V2. Para matanggal mo yung V2. Para masolve mo na yung P2. <coughs> okay? Now, pag ang given naman na problem is ang ang ginadakdak niya ay volume and temperature at constant pressure. Ang atake mo naman diyan si Charles Law. Okay? Volume and temperature kay Charles Law naman 'yan. O ito naman ang kanyang formula. Paano mo hanapin si V2 halimbawa? Ang gagawin mo diyan, cross multiply. Para makuha mo si V2. Okay. Next. Kung ang pinag-uusapan naman sa problem ay pressure and temperature at constant volume ay Galo-Sachs law naman. Hindi sila para-pareho yan. Yung una, pressure and volume. 
pangalawa, volume and temperature. Ito, pressure and temperature. Kuha. Ito yung pinakamadaling paraan para maintindihan ang gas loss. At para alam nyong i-atake ka agad yung problem. Okay? <clears throat> Now, pag tatlo silang nabigay, walang constant. Pag walang sinabi dun na constant at nag-mention siya ng pressure, volume, temperature, eto naman si combined gas loss. Combined gas law naman siya. Okay? Kuha. Ganyan lang. Yung ideal gas law, usually, ano naman yan? Uh, application. Minemension naman dyan lahat. Ito lang kasi ang malilito kayo. Pag may mga nakalagay na pressure, volume, temperature, pressure, volume, temperature, ano kaya ang kinahanap para maging uh, sure ang formula na gagamitin. Okay? Now, going back to the problem, at a given gas occupies 2,000 cc at pressure of 9 cm of mercury. Siyempre, alam mo din kung ano dapat yung mga quantity. Kung hindi ka marunong mag-identify ng quantity, hindi mo rin masusol. Okay. Hmm. So, <clears throat> pag cubic centimeter, ano ang ta ano kaya ito? This is a volume. Cubic centimeter. Ang, ang unit ng volume ay cubic centimeter, liters, mga ganun. Tama? So, may volume at saka pressure. So, ito ang kanyang V1, pressure 1. Tapos, sabi niya, paano kaya kung yung original pressure niya, ito, 90, naging kalahate. So, etong 90 magiging P2. Ang tanong niya, what volume? So, si volume 2 ang hinahanap. Now, so, isipin mo, volume, pressure. Ano kayang gagamitin ko? So, it's Boyle's Law. So, ang sagot dyan is letter D, 4000 cc. Paano naging 4000 cc? Okay. Ano ulit yung formula ni Boyle's Law? P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Ang hinahanap natin ay V2. So, divided by P2 divided by P2 para matanggal si P2 dyan. Okay. P1 is 90 times volume 1, 2000. And then, pressure 2, eto, kalahati daw ni 90. Sabi niya, 1 half, di ba? <clears throat> kalahati ni 90, so divided by 45. So, 90 times 2,000 divided by 45. Kayang-kaya namang i-manual yan. Huwag niyong sabihin na, Sir, di ba hindi pwedeng gumamit ng calculator? Eh, kaya manual. Malamang manual. Okay? So, it's 4,000. Gets? Uh, kailangan. Baka lang may lumabas na ganyan. Okay. Ayan, mga formulas. 42. All of the following are characteristics of metals except metals, metals. <clears throat> Good conductor, brittle, malleable, ductile, ductility. Ang good conductor, siyempre, conductor of heat. Brittle means nag-broken down into pieces. Malleable yung nahahammer. Ductile. Ano bang ductility? <laughs> ano ang sagot? Except. So, the answer here is letter B. Brittle. Hindi brittle ang mga metals. Okay? Looking back at this one. Yung ductile, yun pala, yun, 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 yung property by which a substance can be drawn into wire. Pwede naman yun sa metal. Malleable yung beaten into sheets. Luster, shine. 
Okay? So, yung metal, hindi siya brittle. Hard siya. Ayan, hardness. Kasi ang brittleness is the ability of a certain material to be broken easily. Eh, ang metal, hindi siya nabubroken easily. Okay? So, hindi siya characteristics ng metal. So, yung good conductor, malleability, and ductility are characteristics of metal. Ayan siya. O, conductivity. Good conductor of heat, si metal. Si non-metal, bad conductor of heat. 43. <clears throat> Which is true of metalloids? They have properties of both metals and non-metals. They conduct electricity better than metals. They conduct heat better than metals. They conduct heat and electricity less effective than metals. Metalloids. Ano ba ang metalloids? Sa periodic table, meron lang tayong anin 6 to 7 elements na metalloids. And the rest of the hundreds of elements are metals and non-metals. So, ano kaya ang metalloids? So, obviously, gitna kasi siya. So, letter A. They have both properties of metals and non-metals. Okay? Now, sa periodic table, kung ito yung periodic table, itong yellow na to are the metalloids. Kaya usually, pag nakakita kayo ng periodic table, parang merong staircase dito sa gitna. Ito kasi yung metalloids na sinasabi. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya pure metal, hindi rin siya pure na non-metal. So, meron siyang characteristics or properties ng metal and non-metals. Now, ang mga metals, yung nandito, yung light green, kasama ni hydrogen. Si hydrogen, na-misplaced lang siya, pero uh, according to ano kasi, dapat nandun siya, number one. Siya kasi ang may one lang. <clears throat> siya yung standard bearer kasi. So, Lahat ng itong green na to are non-metals. Kagaya ng oxygen, carbon, yan. Non-metals, kasama si hydrogen. And the rest of all the elements are metals. Metals na lahat ito. Sa periodic <coughs> table. Okay? Metals na yan sa periodic table. Okay, let's proceed. Malapit na. Which of the substances below are compounds and not elements or mixtures? Uh, basic. Saan daw dyan ang compounds? Hindi elements or mixture. Ang mga choices. Ethanol, neon, water, crude oil. 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 3, 1, 3, 4. Siyempre, water compound yan. Kasi, ano ba ang compound? <clears throat> okay, the correct answer there is letter C. 1 and 3. Ethanol and water are compound. Okay. Uh, ano ba ang... Siyempre, pag element, element, nasa periodic table siya. So, neon is an element. Siya lang ang element dito. Si water... Dalawang elements yan na pinag-combine, hydrogen and oxygen. Kaya ang formula niya ay H2O. So, pag dalawang elements, dalawang atoms, compound ang tawag doon. Same is true with ethanol. Si crude oil, mixture na yan. Kasi maraming substances na ang nag-mix dyan. Okay? Ayan. Sa matter kasi, we have pure substance and mixture. Under pure substance, we have element and compound. Si element, made up only of only one type of atom. Kaya lahat ng nasa periodic table are elements. Kaya periodic table of elements. Compounds naman are made up of more than one type of atom. Chemically combined together. Ionic bonding, covalent bonding, ayan. Tapos mixture, homogeneous heterogeneous. Different elements or compounds which are not chemically bonded together. Halo-halo, that's a mixture. Okay? Okay, proceed. <clears throat> 
45, which of the following is correct? The correct name of the compound MNF3. Siyempre, kung hindi mo memorize yung periodic table, hindi ka rin makakapag-name ng compounds. So, MN is manganese. F is fluor fluorine. So, paano babasahin ang MNF3? Okay, letter B. Mag manganese 3 fluoride. Okay, manganese 3 fluoride. Now, there are two ways of chemical bond bonding kasi we have ionic bond and covalent bonding. <coughs> Di ba sa periodic table kanina sinabi ko kung nasaan yung metals, nasaan yung non-metals, nasaan yung metalloid. Now, kung metal at saka non-metal ang pagkocombine mo, ionic bonding ang tawag doon. Let's say, um, lithium oxide. Lithium is metal, oxygen is non-metal. Kaya ionic bonding yun. Covalent naman, pagparehong non-metal. Tsaka metalloid and non-metal. Bakit kailangan pag-aralan ang ionic and covalent? Kasi doon din yung rule kung paano lagyan ng pangalan ang mga compounds. Nabibase din doon. Okay, halimbawa, to. Pag metal and non-metal, di ba ionic bonding ang tawag doon? <coughs> so, si sodium, metal, si chlorine, non-metal. Kaya ang gagawin mo lang dyan, lagyan mo lang ng IDE sa last, uh, sa pangalan ni non-metal. Kaya, sodium chloride. Sodium and chlorine, ito yung salt. Sodium and chlorine, sodium is a metal, non-metal si chlorine. Kaya, sodium chloride. Lithium is metal, sulfur is non-metal. Kaya, lithium sulfide. Nakuha nyo ang paglagay ng pangalan. Tapos, aluminum is metal, oxygen is non-metal. Kaya, aluminum oxide. Hindi oxygenide, okay? oxide. Okay, now, paano naman kung dalawang non-metal? Pag dalawang non-metal, gagamit ka ng prefixes. Pag 1, mono. Pag 2, di. 3, tri. Penta. Uh, ah. Penta. Uh, what else? <coughs> Hexa, hepta. Okta, nona. Mga ganon. Okay? Halimbawa, yung carbon and oxygen. Si carbon and oxygen, parehong non-metal yan. Dito kasi, i-consider mo yung oxidation, yung ions. Yung si share na sinasabi natin. So, si, si carbon kasi, meron siyang uh, oxidation number na 2. Si oxygen, zero. Wala siyang si share. So, cross-multiply mo yan. Eto, tsaka yun. Kaya magiging CO2. Kaya eto, ang tawag ay carbon dioxide. Or pwede rin monocarbon dioxide. Yan ang paglagay ng pangalan. Pagparehong non-metal. Okay. For example, nakita ka ng uh, eto, N2O5 dinitrogen penta oxide. mag end ka pa rin ng IDE. Eto, sulfur. Pwede rin monosulfur kasi 1 siya. Hexafluoride kasi 6. Or kahit wala na yung mono. Sulfur hexafluoride. Hmm. Nare-recall nyo yung chemistry nyo. <clears throat> now, paano naman pag polyatomic ions? Yung polyatomic ions naman, dinudugtong lang siya. Ito. Yan, lahat. So, kung halimbawa, ang, ang formula na kita nyo, sasabihin niya sa question, what is the chemical name of this element? I mean, compound. Halimbawa, <clears throat> 
A S C R O 4 may negative 2 kasi doon so ililipat ko dito <clears throat> so wala na yon pag yan ang pangalan yan ay sulfur chromate idudugtong mo lang kasi s is sulfur tapos eto si polyatomic ions kasi yun yung may mga uh, tatlo na elements or may mga oxidation number or states ions ganyan so chromate so sulfur chromate dadagdag mo lang or <clears throat> hydro ay yung ano ginagamit sa nung tawag doon yung agua oxinada para hydrogen peroxide ito siya hydrogen peroxide what else ato ah, ammonium Ah, sa ginagamit sa mga soft drinks, salimbawa, <coughs> Na, sodium carbonate, or sodium bicarbonate. Ah, ganyan. Or sulfur acetate, dudugtong mo lang yan. Kung yung formula niya ay eto, at saka uh, nitrogen yan. Nitrogen acetate. Ganyan siya. Okay? So, <coughs> Yan ang pag-name ng chemical compounds in terms of ionic and covalent. So, take note, pag dalawang non-metals, combine yung pangalan ng dalawang elements, IDE ang last pero mag-insert ng prefixes. Di, tri, tetra pala yung four, tetra. Penta yung, yung 5, hexa yung 6, hepta yung 7, octa yung 8, and so on. Okay? Tapos, pag metal and non-metal, simple lang. Just the name of two elements, but the second element should end with I, D, E. 46. Steams burn are more damaging than burns caused by boiling water because steam is blank. Diba? Pag may kumukulong tubig, subukan mo kayang ilapit yung kamay mo doon sa bunganga ng takuri or yung sa tawag, water heater. Tapos isang kamay mo naman, isang birds mo sa kumukulong tubig. Tingnan mo kung saan doon ang mas ma, yung mas malakas ang damage. So, mas malakas yung steam burn. Bakit kaya? Okay. Because <clears throat> steam has, letter B, has more heat energy per kilogram than boiling water. Hindi mas mataas yung temperature. Pareho pa rin silang 100 uh, degrees Celsius pag na-reach niya ang boiling point. Same water vapor din. Same spaces. Kaya lang kasi, steam produces uh, more severe burn than boiling water because steam has more heat energy than water. Dahil ito yung concept na, ng uh, latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of condensation. Okay? Ganon din sa ma malamig. Forty-seven. The handle of a spoon is dip in a cup of hot water becomes warm. Ano ba? Dak bucket. What is the method of heat transfer? Heat dapat yun. Heat transfer. Condensation, radiation, convention, conduction. Convection siguro to. Letter C. Convection. Yung Bakit uminit yung spoon nung nilagay mo sa mainit na tubig? Because of letter D, conduction. Now, ang convection, ang conduction yun, nagta-transfer. Okay? Through direct contact. 
Okay, heat current from one substance to another by direct. Kaya umiinip din ito. Conduction yun. Convection naman because of the molecular motion. Sa loob. Kung hahawakan mo yung tubig, ma mapapasok ka, convection yun. Yung radiation naman, syempre, radi nire-radiate siya, ta-transmit in the form of waves or rays or particles. So, yan yung method of heat transfer. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Okay? If no more solute can be dissolved in a solvent at a given temperature, then the solution is saturated, unstable, supersaturated, dispersed. Wala na daw ma-dissolve. Uh, wala nang solute. Diba? Solution, solvent and solute. Halimbawa, mimix mo yung uh, sugar sa water pag gagawa ka ng kape. Solute yung co sugar and coffee. Solvent yung tubig. If no more solute can be dissolved in a solvent at a given temperature, ang tawag sa solution ay letter A, saturated solution. Okay? A, saturated solution. Ito. Unsaturated kung marami pang i-dissolve. Okay? Kung marami pa. Supersaturated naman ang tawag doon kung... <coughs> Mas marami yung dissolved solute than uh, solvent. Kaya, nag-form na siya ng crystals. Super saturated yun. Yung saturated, yung wala ng solute na ma-dissolve. Kumbaga, tubig na tubig na siya. Okay? So, ang unsaturated, less solute than the solution is capable of dissolving. Super saturated naman kung more dissolved solute than in saturated solutions. 49. What does a pH below 7 indicate? O diba, kayong mga babae gumagamit kayo ng pH care. Anong ibig sabihin ng pH care? Yun yung concept na yan pH yung feminal wash na yan presence of ions basicity alkalinity acidity pH below 7 kaya dapat ang pH nyo ay 7 lang para balance lang siya kung mas mababa sa 7 ibig sabihin very acidic na siya okay sa sa pH scale ito yung pH scale <coughs> 7 is neutral. Pag below 7, acidic na siya. Kagaya ng black coffee, tomato juice, soda, lemon juice, acidic lahat yun, maasim. Sour taste. Pag more than 7 naman, basic or alkal alkaline, alkalinity. Okay? Ito naman yung mga basic. Seawater, baking soda, milk of magnesia. So, ito naman yung mga bitter in taste. Okay? Ammonia, soapy water, bleach. O, bleach is 13. So, very basic siya. So, acidic, basic. Kaya ang pH care ninyo, 7 lang siya, neutral. Hindi siya acidic, hindi siya basic. Yun yun kung bakit siya pH care, baka ninyo pa alam. Okay? Kasi otherwise, makangati ka or parang ganun. Kung hindi siya akma sa, sa skin, ganun. Or sa, magkakaroon siya ng chemical reaction. Kaya ang pH care, dapat nasa P7 lang siya, balance. Okay, last number. It is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of a substance by the deg by 1 degree Celsius. Ito yung <clears throat> halimbawa tinatamad ka gusto mong magkape pero <clears throat> uh, 
ang init-init ng kape. So usually ginagawa mo, nilalagyan mo ng ice para mabilis. Mabilis siyang tawag doon, lumamig para isana sana na lang ang pag-inom. So this is the concept. Gaano kabilis ang pag paglamig ng tubig pag nilagyan mo ng ganito. So that is to raise the temperature of 1 kg of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. We call it letter B, specific heat capacity. Yung joule, ito yung unit of heat. Calorie, unit of heat din yan. Okay? Energy pala yung joule. Yung watt, wala yan. Electricity. Okay? So, ito yung formula ng specific heat capacity. Example. Pag specific heat kasi, halimbawa, sa frying pan versus earthen pot, mas madaling mag-warm up itong si frying pan. Hard to warm up naman si earthen pot. Ibig sabihin, ang specific heat niya is greater. Malaki yung kailangan niya bago uminit. Kasi makapal. etong frying pan, madali siyang uminit kasi ang specific heat niya is smaller. Mabilis lang, kumbaga. Ko, I mean, konti lang ang kailangan niya para uminit. Okay? So, when you speak of heat capacity naman, uh, yung smaller mass, class of water, kesa yung malaki, yung dagat, yung dagat heats up is lower kasi malawak siya. Pero si, si glass of water, mas madaling uminit kasi kukunti yung mass niya. Okay? Heats up faster kasi konti yung mass. Okay? That is heat capacity. Ito, specific heat capacity. Okay. Share your score. Three hours pa din, kahit 50 items lang. Anyway, later on naman, after all, <coughs> magagarito naman tayo sa Prof. Ed. Every day na, every ano na yan, every other day. Kasi mayarap pala pag every day. <laughs> Kakapagod din. Okay. Kaya, subukan din natin yung mga lahat ng drills na binibigay sa inyo, sasagutan isa-isa, i-explain. Okay. Para maka... Ito na ang gagawin natin sa March na habang kayo ay nagbe-brainstorm sa major. Ayan. Magkaganito tayo. Iba-ibang uh, topic para mat-practice nyo na. Okay? Kasi, importante kasi malaman ang concept muna bago mag-ganito. Kasi kung wala kayong idea tapos na ganito na ang mga pinapanood nyo or nire-review nyo, mahihirapan kayong mag-recall. Pero kung meron ka ng idea, madali na lang. ba? Okay? So, sana ang mga score nyo ay more than 25. So, any questions? Gutom na gutom na kayo? Ayan. O. Oh. Para hindi na lang si Alden Richards ang nakikita niya dyan. Okay. So, I hope marami kayo natutunan today. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Sige po. Mag-dinner na kayo. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Let's call it a night. And have a great weekend. Thank you for so much. Bye, sir. Thank you.